I'm here today with Professor Michael Ammon, head of the Department of Ophthalmology at the Hospital of St. John, Vienna, Austria, and inventor of the new Sulcoflex Trifocal Pseudophagic Supplementary IOL, developed in collaboration with Rainer R&D. Professor Ammon, could you please tell us a little bit about this product? Sure, it's a pleasure. Uh, the platform is not new. It's almost 10 years of experience we have with that. It's an additive lens. You put that lens into the sulcus on top of a pseudophagic IOL. So the new thing with that new product is that there is a trifocal optic on top. So a very modern new optical system which enables or should enable the patient to see in three different distances. And now let's take a look on the first case of implantation of a trifocal sulcoflex lens in the world. I instill viscoelastic into the anterior chamber and behind the iris to lift the iris in order to in ease the implantation. Now I have the medicinal injector with a very fine nozzle and I advance the plunger in order to implant the lens into the anterior chamber and I try that the leading haptic primarily goes behind the iris. So I do it very slowly as this is my first case and you see that the lens unfolds very controlled. I advance the plunger to the end of the nozzle and you see the trailing haptic is inside the anterior chamber now. Now I will use a spatula to rotate the lens behind the iris and to bring the end of the haptics behind the iris. You can see the diffractive rings. There are 16 diffractive rings and the central zone. It is important that you remove the viscoelastico, la, viscoelasticum in toto so that you remove it from the interface, from the bag and from the anterior chamber and from behind the iris. Now I lift the sulcoflex lens and with the IA tip I go in between the two lenses and remove the viscoelasticum from there. Then I will remove the rest of the viscoelastic. The capsular bag was evac evacuated from the viscoelasticum before. So at the end of the aspiration, there should be no remnant of any viscoelastic substance. At the end of the aspiration, you will see a very nice centration. And now I just pressurize the eye. In that case, I perform some hydro, uh, some hydration of the wound. And finally, I just will inject some antibiotic. So this is the implantation of the world first trifocal sulcoflex lens. So after this world's first implantation of a trifocal sulcoflex, I am happy to say that the implantation was straightforward and without any complication. Centration of the lens was good and I hope that all the cases in the future will end like that one. Which patient is the ideal one for sulcoflex trifocal? There are two options in principle. One patient would be the patient with a monofocal pseudophagic IOL inside already who has the wish to have spectable independence. So you can secondarily implant a patient this trifocal add-on lens if he has the need to be independent from spectacles. The other indication is the patient who has a cataract or who has a presbyopia and you would uh, implant that lens in combination to a monofocal lens in the bag. I like to call that duet procedure, where I implant a monofocal lens into the bag and during the same procedure, I would implant the add-on lens on top into the sulcus. So there are two ways to use that lens, in pseudophakes 
or in cataractous patients. With regards to the duet implantation, is that your preference or would you prefer doing it in two sessions? I personally prefer to do it in one session, in a duet procedure, because if you implant it in one session, you have the high chance that you don't need to do a second intervention. Because in more than, much more than 90% of the cases, you will end in emetropia and you don't have to reoperate anyhow. If you don't end with zero or with a satisfying biometric result, you then just have to exchange that lens to another add-on lens. So with the duet procedure, you mainly just use one procedure. If you do it in two steps, in 100% you need two surgeries. So my approach is to do a proper biometry, implant the monofocal lens into the bag and put a trifocal lens correcting only the intermediate and near distance with zero for far into the sulcus. Is Sulcoflex trifocal similar or even maybe a better option for patient satisfaction in comparison to Ray1 trifocal? From the optical principle, it's the same. It has the same optical uh, constances. It's so it works as it works with a Ray1 trifocal lens. It has a drive diffractive optic, it has three focus points, and it has similar rings, and all the optical structure is the same. The only advantage of doing add-on trifocal lens is that it is an adjustable optic. Even if you have a healthy eye, you never know what happens within the next years or 10 years or decades. And if there is some change, you might explant that lens very easily. Or if the patient doesn't like this lens because of optical phenomena, you at any time are able to step back and to take that lens out. So the advantage is it is reversible as compared to a monoblock trifocal lens in the bag, which is much more difficult to explant or to exchange. And the second interesting thing is we performed a study comparing the centration of a sulcus lens with the bag lens within the same eye. And we, re we realized that centration was significantly better in the sulcus lens. So we might find that the centration of that add-on lens is an advantage as compared to a trifocal in the bag lens. How much time do you usually have to wait after the first implantation to implant a Sulcoflex lens? You don't have to wait weeks. You can straightforward open the wound and implant the lens at any time after the first surgery. I, as I mentioned already, routinely do it in one procedure. But if you do it in two procedures, you may wait until there's a stable biometry, let's say after one to two weeks, and then at any time you may reopen the primary wound and implant the add-on lens on top. Will you be reporting these early implantations anytime soon? So yes, I will present all this data. We are collecting the data from our patients, the contrast, the defocus curves, and all these data will be presented at the Rainer Sponsored Symposium at the ESRS on Sunday 23rd of September at 1 p.m. Which patients are not suitable for Sulcoflex? Morphologically, I would say if there is some problem with the sonules, if there is any sonulopathy, a sonular dialysis or something like that, uh, I would not suggest to implant an additive lens because you need the support of the sonules on and of the capsular bag in order to have a good centration and a good stability of the lens. But in all other cases, I think it is a good option to use that lens. Definitely, if you use multifocal lenses, you always have to check if there is some other pathology within the eye. I wouldn't do this lens in patients with a severe AMD or diabetic retinopathy. But 
in general, it has a very similar spectrum of indications as any other multifocal lens. The only advantage, as I mentioned already, is that it is reversible. So if the patient in later times creates some problem within the eye and he needs more contrast or whatsoever, you may step back and exchange that lens. How do you calculate the Sokoflex trifocal lens power? So if I have a cataract patient, I do a standard biometry and then I use the proper formula and calculate for the monofocal lens for emetropia. Then I put this lens into the bag and on top I put the trifocal sulcoflex lens with zero uh, for far distance and the additional uh, diopters. So if it is a pseudophagic patient, you need the, the spherical equivalent of the patient. So you need his uh, visual acuity with the best spherical and toric correction. So you calculate the spherical equivalent and from that uh, calculation you easily may correct the patient so that he becomes an emetropic patient. There are calculation formulas provided by Rayner, for instance, for that special lens. And with that option, you easily will end up in a promising good result. The good thing with the additive Rayner Salcoflex lens is that you have water steps. So you really may titrate the refraction for the patient exactly. Do you have a preference in which axis of the eye the haptics sit to ensure best stability in the eye? No, I think as we don't use a toric multifocal lens for additive IOLs, I would not mind if the haptic has any position. You don't need to, to check that, no. Which injector do you like to use? Now I use the Medicel injector and I'm very happy with it. It has a wide loading base where this quite large lens fits in easily. And then you just close the wings and inject the lens through your incision. The nozzle of that injector, of the Medicel injector, is very narrow. My routine incision is about 2.4 millimeters. Are there any known complications with Sulcoflex? In my hands, I never had any complications beside some pressure rise on the first post-op day. But I think that's not uh, because of the implant itself. But I have heard that in some cases there was an implantation upside down. And I have to say that this is absolutely be to avoid it because if you have an angulation in that sulcoflex lens and if you put it upside down, you will create a pupillary block resulting in a secondary glaucoma. And for that reason, it's absolutely mandatory that you implant it in the right way. If you realize during surgery that you have such a situation, you have to rotate that lens to bring it into the correct position or to explant it again and put a new one in. But in my hands, I never had such a complication. Did you implant the previous Sulcoflex multifocal into pseudophagix? And how do you think the defocused contrast will perform with the new trifocal optics? Yes, of course. I implanted the former multifocal lens as a duet procedure and secondarily on pseudofix, And I was quite happy with that. But I think that the new lens has a lot of advantages as compared to that old model. First, it was a refractive lens. So I think that the contrast will be much better with the new trifocal one. Second, it was a refractive bifocal lens. And now we have a trifocal lens. So we have now a focus on the intermediate distance. And I think it's very important. And it gets more and more important on the intermediate distance because we use a lot of laptops and cell phones and for that reason I think trifocal is advantageous as compared to bifocal. So I think there are two main advantages. One is higher contrast and the second is the defocus curve. Thank you.